Today we talk about the key to accomplishing your goals. Hello legends and super legends, welcome to Velo Harmony. In today's video I want to talk about what you need to focus on if you want to accomplish any goal you may have. And this comes about because I'm having a lot of challenges as the channel has grown. I have gotten a lot of people that are signing up for coaching and I think some of them have unrealistic expectations. If you want to accomplish any kind of goal, you have to invest time. Time is an asset we have a finite amount of. So you can't go and sell all your time and expect to have time for the other things that you consider that are important to you. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you only have a few days to train, you can not continue to make other commitments that infringe on that time, the finite time you already have for training and then expect to achieve the goals that you set out. You got, you got two choices. You can adjust your goals down as you use up more of your training time for other things, or you can divest yourself from the other things and invest more time in your training. What do I mean by that? Um, I've got people that have signed up for coaching that have different amount of time available for training. Uh, one of the, the things that I have on the website when you sign up is you fill out a form, you submit, you let me know how many hours you have to dedicate each day to your training. And then you tell me what your goals are, whether you've done your threshold, yada, yada, yada. The point I'm trying to get to is if you tell me you have an hour a day to train and then we start the program then you come back and say, oh, I, I said I had an hour, but now I only got 30 minutes a day. But then you don't change your goals. You're kidding yourself. Because, yeah, I'll, I'll readjust your plan for 30 minutes. But don't expect to achieve those goals if you have reduced the time that you're committing to the work that it takes to get you there. So fast forward. To achieve anything in life, you have to decide what is most critical to you. If your goal for your health and wellness, which is what I call it, in, you know, cycling, everything rolled into there, is paramount, then why are you giving all your time to something else? Whether it's a job, career, or whatever. You have to make a choice. Because why? If you're working 50, 60 hours a week and you neglect your health, what do you think is going to happen when you get ill? They're going to they're going to replace you like that. I've played the corporate game, OK, because they need somebody in that role. They don't really care that you're having a big problem because they have bosses to answer to as well. You're 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 a peg in the structure. So if you can't show up and perform, they got to find somebody to fill that role. You can't fault them if you don't think enough about what is significant because Without your health, you have nothing else. So if you neglect your health and you say, I'm going to chase this. I and mean, we've had comments from people recently alluding to that. Then you, you know yourselves on, on the channel. If you, you, you go and start working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And then all of a sudden you got high blood pressure, hypertension, all of that. And then you get ill to where you can't even get out of bed. You lose everything. You lose your life, you, you, you lose your wellness, your relationships, and you lose the job that you took to be paramount to you. So why are you selling all your time? Maybe you need to give up that second home, or maybe you need to give up the boat, or whatever else it is you work in the stuff that people in Western economies chase. Maybe it's time to reorient yourself and focus on having more time as opposed to more stuff that you can't even use because you're working all the time. Makes no sense. You know, and I'm, I'm passionate about it because it's something I've been through and I've had to make tough decisions myself. But when you when I deal with people and they continually adjust down the hours that they're putting into cycling, but then they still expect to improve. I mean, one of the things that I do in the plan is if you even if you come with a threshold number, I bet I take your threshold number and I put it in my calculation table to see where they fall out for your age and so forth. 
and we kind of start the program. But then what I usually do is I, I wait to see if people are telling me, oh, this workout's too easy, this workout's too hard. And, and after having dealt with a lot of people, I kind of have an idea of where the zones usually fall. The numbers are about the same, but it doesn't mean you're going to be putting out the same power. That's what I talked about. Somebody who is well-trained at 145 beats per minute is going a lot faster than an untrained person at 40, 145 beats per minute. You guys who have watched my base training video, you know what I'm talking to. And maybe it's something I'll talk about in another video. The point I'm making is this. You want to improve whatever it is. You want to lose weight. You want to get fit. You want to uh, uh, deal with the high blood pressure you're having. You have to be patient and you have to invest time. Time is what makes anything work. Just like you invest time in a career, you have to invest time in your health. Now, you have to decide if you're only riding three days a week or say six hours a week, your expectations, if it's for weight loss, needs to be more realistic because you don't eat three or four days a week. You eat every day, several times a day. So you have to be realistic. You have to ask yourself, what am I eating? Are my food choices well, being well made? Or do I need to work out more frequently? Because I think that is more effective. You eat every day, you need to work out every day. I mean, what kind of life you have to where I asked somebody, I even I made a comment on, on one of the, the legends here on the channel. I said, he said he had, he had been working a lot more and he was trying to get away from that and get back to a healthier lifestyle. The, the ironic thing about it was he knew that what he was doing was unhealthy and it was good that he admitted that. So that was good to see. But what I replied to him was I said that you should at least have 30 minutes a day for you. I mean, what kind of life is it to where you get up and you can't give yourself 30 minutes? It's your day. Why are you selling every hour of it? It's time to reevaluate. I mean, if this were your last day on this planet, ask yourself, what would you do today? If you knew today was your last day, what would you do? Make that list. And that will give you your priority. I'll be it. I guarantee the job won't be number one. You'll be one of the few. You'll be rare if the job is number one. Because it's probably going to be family, friends, hobbies, whatever, before that job comes on that list, if this was your last day, the job will be, if this were your last day on earth, chances are you'd call in sick and use that day differently. So use that as a parameter to set your priorities and quit selling all your time. Give yourself your time and invest in yourself. So you want to achieve your goals, whether it's losing weight, being, being fit, being faster on the bike or whatever it is you're into, you need to invest more time in you to improve. You can't ride three hours a week and expect to lose weight and get faster. I don't care. You know, people talk about quality versus quantity, which is another video I'll make about that. You can only do so much quality work. If you only have three hours in a week, yeah, you can ride, but you're going to have to space it out. You can ride quality, quality, but you still need the, the long rides, which a lot of people don't have patience for. It's the long rides that create those capillaries I talk about. You can't go fast on a very crappy narrow road if you were driving a car. You need those nice lanes to go up. So look at it that way. If you never do long rides, you will have no lanes to go fast when it's time to go fast. That's what I mean. You need to build the capillaries that will allow you to go fast. So you can't, just, you can't take shortcuts when it comes to fitness. You have to do the work. Yes, structure is important. Avoiding garbage miles is important. But most of all, you must invest a minimum amount of hours every week. So if you only got three days to ride, you need to at least get six to seven hours in throughout that week. Quit taking away time from the few days you already have for riding and then expecting to accomplish your goal. That's not going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to wrap up on this topic here because it's a never ending one, but I want people to think about it in terms of what is the most important thing to you and prioritize accordingly. You don't need stuff. If you can't have the time to enjoy the stuff, then what's the point? What you need is time. To that effect, keep getting your K's in.